welcome to my life as i live it my name is kenna and i am your favorite content creator okay i'm your favorite event planner i'm your favorite baby girl <laughs> okay based in duala cameroon thank you very much for clicking on today's video so on my last video talking about weddings and events and all that i had asked you guys like how many of you actually would want me to see how to make weddings more interesting and everybody was like me 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 and i'm like oh my god you people like you you people like you people like free information everybody was just like me 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 i'm like should i really come here and give you guys all my gist all the tea everything everything i was like mm -hmm. but because i love you guys so very much i am going to do that for you okay i'm going to do that for you you push you use me okay instead of you to come now and take me to use me for your occasions you want to be get, getting information for free but i'm going to make an exception today i am going to tell you guys but please after the, giving you my magical information eh recommend me to your friends recommend me to your family not just for weddings for any event any event whatsoever we can make it work what? So let's dive into the video as i said i'm going to be telling you what makes a wedding more interesting how to make your wedding more interesting and the very first thing i'm just going to tell you is that please so engage your audience okay engage your audience if your audience does not feel like anything is going on they're going to go so that's the very first thing when you want to do your wedding your wedding program is it the program the wedding yeah program of the way everything is supposed to go you want to ensure that you are putting things that is going to engage the audience that's a mistake a lot of people do when they're planning their weddings they forget that they have to engage the audience they just feel like the audience are just there to sit and watch them and that's a very big mistake if you want your wedding to be interesting to begin with you have to look for a way to engage the audience i'm not talking about the empty coming to stand and he's like oh yeah yeah oh yeah 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 go oh just go. no 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 oh uh, MC coming to ask, am I handsome? What do you people think? Like, mm -mm. I'm talking about doing things that the audience feels like, oh, we're part of these people's um, special day. We have not just come to watch these people get married and watch them do their celebration. We have come and we're actually taking part. Okay. So the first thing is create an apparative table. What is an aperitive table? An aperitive table is just basically that table that has some snacks, it has drinks, different drinks, and you want to get a bartender who can do that. It's okay. Some people will be like, oh, I don't have money. If you don't have money to get a bartender, you have that one. If you And you have one person in your family that is trusted, that you know the person can handle those drinks to serve people because I would not advise you to do an aperitif table and then you just leave it that everybody should just come and serve themselves except you have so 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 much money but if you don't have money yeah, you're doing a wedding on the budget and yeah you want to try to get somebody who is going to serve the drinks you want to get somebody that will stand there to serve people their snacks when they come just do something like in most weddings these days you see it but some people are not still doing it that's why I'm, I'm insisting you want to put um an apparative table that is open all night long yes all night long okay on that table you just put like a canopy outside it has drinks there it has um it has like snacks and everything so that people while they are first of all waiting for the couple to come because we have that bad habit of keeping the uh, guests waiting while they are waiting they are drinking they're taking snacks there they are just discussing it's more like a cocktail party before getting in that's the first thing i'll tell you and sometimes if the drinks there are they keep coming and coming and coming it's okay you can just while they event is going on some people who are bored can just go there take a drink hang out chill a little before coming back into the hall so that is the first thing i'll tell you i know some people come and be like ah but people be going out it does not matter you want to keep your audience entertained and engaged so that is going to keep them just the fact that they know that they have enough drinks is going to keep them get a comedian yes people do this at their weddings but some i've gone to some weddings and i'm seeing like comedians making really dry jokes i beg you because then i went to a wedding and the comedian was so annoying i felt like he was picking on women i was like what what is this one doing 
what i could not wait for the man to finish talking you want to get a comedian and ensure that the person probably talks with you probably tells the jokes or does something like that something like does a little show for you before you use him don't just hear that ah this uncle he's very funny you just carry him and then you feel uh, mm -mm. you always want to double check because when i went to that wedding i honestly felt insulted like that comedian there was a no-no for me he was being he was being how they say it he was just being anyhow insulting women i hated it so you want to ensure that the comedian runs his jokes by you and you ensure that okay this is not going to be something that is going to make my audience feel like ah what is this man talking about the next thing i'm going to tell you to do is to ensure that there are games many games 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 okay games keeps your guests entertained it makes them feel involved like not just games between only like the bridesmaids groomsmen the bride and no games between everybody like games that everybody is included you could do something like a scavenger hunt okay you call like oh 10 ladies from the crowd and they come and you're probably hidden a gift somewhere and you're like okay the first you try to eliminate one by one but when the ladies come and they stand you're like okay the first person to get a pink high heel shoes so they have to go to all the guests and they're looking like who has pink high heels you bring it okay you're up for the next round the person that does not find or the last two people are kicked out you look again the next person to bring a bow tie for example they rush they get a bow tie the last person or the last two people are kicked out just like that and then at the end you ask the last two people to look okay you could have put let me say a box of candy on any of the tables or you would have put 5k on any of the tables in a box and you're like the first person to find 5k in a box they go all but table by table like that keeps people laughing they're entertained at the way the people are hustling to get it and all that you get that is one game next thing i'll say is the empty could talk to the couple and then write quotes about them or talk to the groomsmen and bridesmaid, bridesmaids and write quotes of things that the couple have said okay if like let me see something that i always say like i chop life for a living okay they could just write that down my husband is always saying oh five man and five man for example they write all of those down right they write like five or ten quotes from the bride or the groom right after they have written all those the empty now is going to take those quotes and explain to the crowd like okay who must have said this is it the groom who said this or the bride and then the crowd is going to guess or people you could pick up people one by one to guess okay so he'll be like okay who said i chop life for a living and somebody in the crowd will guess is it kenna or is kenna's husband you get it's really fun get like very interesting quotes that they say or very interesting things that they always say just to keep the keep the crowd laughing and having fun okay the next thing i'll ask you to do is play the shoe game okay and to make the shoe game more interesting i'll tell you that it should not only end with the couple okay it's always interesting you could use like two couples like the newly wedded and then if you have like a couple that has stayed in marriage for like 20 years and above you get them from the crowd and ask them to play the shoe game too so the couple can play the shoe game and after they are finished playing you try now um an older couple to do the shoe game so that you see you can see the difference it's like after all these years do these people still know each other properly or it's a learning process every day that is also another one that is always so fun i enjoy shoe games so people are like oh my god they've overdone the shoe game but no as long as i'm going to weddings and i'm seeing different couples doing it it's so nice i enjoy a shoe game even more when after the mc has asked all the questions they now move and they're like okay people in the crowd five questions five people in the crowd should ask questions it's always so next thing is this one people do it a lot you can hire a musician to come and perform a popular musician to come and perform that way people are like oh my god i came to that wedding and i saw a superstar okay if you have money if you don't have money it is okay don't sweat it you could also do a playback like the groom and the bride could actually do a playback okay they could practice moves and then come and do a playback with their bridesmaids their groomsmen and all that people that one is always so so very interesting guys please ignore my kids crying in the background i'm really hearing my husband he's really trying to make them stop noise anyway that is Another it thing that is in almost all events i go to these days is a photo booth either a photo booth 
or how they call it the 360 photo is it is it the 360 photo but that is something that is everywhere you want to do that people love taking pictures of themselves when they are all dressed up we know when we're going for weddings we look peng so a lot of people always come to weddings and they are ready to oh i want to shine i want to take my nice pictures for the gram i want to this i want to that okay so making a photo booth it could just be an area where people will go stand and take their pictures or an <sighs> I'm going to talk about people's faces again <laughs> and i know that some of you are like can i leave us to put our face okay you could do the one okay the backdrop where your face is and because a lot of people like that i don't i, I don't like taking picture, pictures in that thing but maybe it's just me you could put the the backdrop where your face is all decorated you could do a separate photo booth as well where people can just stand and take their pen pictures just try to be selfless okay we know it's your wedding we know your face can be everywhere but you could just do that to make your your guests feel more mm, happy okay and then the 360 photo booth do i have to really explain how it works yeah just put a 360 photo booth there where people can come and take their pictures that keeps um and i know you cannot do it for the whole night obviously if you have like a time frame when you do that where people can just go take their beautiful pictures and all that about and it's, please it's okay for us not to just do only the woman throwing the flowers let's do the man the guys taking off the gutter the husband taking off his wife's gutter okay is that how they pronounce it the gutter like she went i did that at my wedding i come and see the way the guys were running away from <laughs> From being the ones to pick the gutter okay so she wears the gutter and then when the guy uh, when after she has thrown her bouquet she sits down and her husband has to take off the gutter it's always so interesting especially if the groom is ready to play he can dance for her strip he can use his mouth to take it off or he can like that is what people will be screaming and shouting because we like bad things we like bad things we like to look at parents faces when when the children are doing those things <laughs> So that is another very interesting thing. I hardly see it in weddings, especially weddings in Cameroon. I don't know, maybe we're afraid of our parents, but I did it for my wedding. My husband did not really, 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 really overdo things. Like, it was so strange. Guys were like, oh, what is your movie? Some people were feeling like he was taking off my pants. But no, that is another interesting thing that will keep your crowd screaming. They will be like, oh my God. Yeah. They put a chair for the bride to sit in, sit on. And then the groom is going to take off her gutter and throw it. Single guy that catches the gutter is now going to have a special dance with the girl who picked the bouquet, okay? And we never know. Things might happen, okay? <laughs> okay. So the next one that I feel I really like, which was also done for my wedding, is older couples blessing the younger couple, okay? How this works is just that... After the first dance, when the first dance of the couple is about to end, the MC could just go ahead and call for all the married couples. Not all, like he could pick a couple of like seven married couples, people that have been married. Oh, he, oh, he could say anybody who had been married from 30 years upward, anybody who had been married here from 40 years upward should come. When they come, they surround the couple, they go around, they stand around the couple and all of them dance, dance, dance and they could pray with the couple and just give them blessings. Another okay. interesting thing that you can do is call couples like, okay, just say if you have been married, if you have been married from five, four, from five years or from two years, come or you could go out and actually pick the couples that's why you have to be working with somebody the mc has to be always working with somebody in the family you could ask like okay can you pick out like 10 couples 10 people who have been married there together not people who came alone 10 people who have been married in the crowd you pick the couples they come out and they stand and you're like okay for those those who have been married from five years and above right so the younger people who have married five years below, they go and sit down. Those who have been married for 10 years and above, those below go and sit down just like that till you meet, till you get the oldest couple. When you get to the oldest couple now, you give them the mic and ask them, okay, give us interesting tips about communication, communicating in marriage, about anything, like choose any interesting topic and give the microphone to the couple and ask them to explain how they make it work in their marriage. Those are the things that will make a marriage 
a, a wedding really really interesting anyway guys that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it tell me what you think if you have any more things you want me to do when it comes to event planning wedding planning you know can i here i'm your girl i'm always here ready to answer all your questions thank you guys very very much for watching please if you have watched this part i am not subscribed please kindly click on the subscribe button i am going to see you on my next one love you bye